Well, if you want to undervolt your RTX 4070 Ti Super to increase the FPS, decrease the power consumption, decrease the temperature, decrease thermal throttling, remove coil wine, and actually get more FPS and 1% FPS in games, this is the right video for you. And no, I'm not kidding. We can do all of that. We will have two different profiles. The first one is going to be more balanced, mostly focused on thermal performance and efficiency. And then we're going to have the second one just fully focused on performance and i will tell you guys how you can tweak your card to make it go the fastest possible now what i have here today is a zotac rtx 4070 ti trinity in white i actually have a dedicated video discussing zotac cards they're pretty good but this video will work for any model of rtx 4070 ti super if you have a different card i have another video for you because i'm trying to cover all different cards and cpus on the market so i have playlists on the channel you can go check them out but Again, if you have one of these, any brand, even the Founders Edition NVIDIA card, this video is going to be right for you. So we're going to go straight into Windows and show you guys how to do it. Before we do that, promise me one thing. If the video ends up being helpful, you will drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Okay, <laughs> let's go. So for the tutorial, you're going to need two simple pieces of software. One is going to be Heaven Benchmark and one is going to be MSI Afterburner. Now you will find both of them in the description down below. Now, first off, we want to open up Heaven Benchmark and basically set it to be quality, ultra, tessellation extreme, anti-aliasing X8 and 1440p resolution. Then we want to run it. And once it's running, we want to hit the Windows button and open up MSI Afterburner right here on top. At this point, we want to go into settings and enable voltage control and voltage monitoring right there. Hit apply, hit yes, it will reboot. And then here we will be. Okay, now at this point, let's go ahead and click on Curve Editor. Now, we're going to start with the first profile. The first profile, again, is going to be mostly for efficiency, temperatures, etc. So, how we do it is we go here on the left side and we grab the 900 millivolt voltage point. Okay, we hold Shift and now we want to bring this one all the way up to 2550. Again, this is the baseline. Then I will tell you how to change it for yourself if you want to customize it. Now, click on the void right here, hold Shift, and select the right side of the curve while holding Shift. Now, release Shift, left click on any one of these points, and flatten it down. And now, hit Apply. Now, as you can see, we are now running at 2550 right there. Now, this will actually make the card run at a little bit of a lower clock than it would at stock. So we are actually, theoretically, at least in synthetic benchmarks, losing a bit of performance. But no worries, Toriel will cover it. Now, next step is going to be go on the memory clock and give it plus 1000 right there. Hit apply. Now, power limit and temperature limit, if you can change it, unlock it all the way and hit apply. And now the first setting is actually done. So what we want to do is go save it, save it into one, click into one, hit apply, Go here, go start with Windows, start minimized, hit apply, hit OK, click here. And now Afterburner will be running every time you start your PC with these settings perfectly fine and your card will be much cooler, much quieter, draw a lot of less power. OK. However, let's say you actually want to get performance out of this. How do you do it? Well, no worries. Second preset. Let's reset all of it and let's go again. So what we want to do is this time we are starting from the 975 millivolt voltage point. So right here, okay? So again, we hold the shift, we grab the point, and we bring it all the way up to 2750. Now again, this is the baseline. You can push this one a lot higher. Matter of fact, if you want to push it, I'll tell you right away. 99% of cards can do 2800. 2800. So if you want to push it outright, you can just push it. But just for the sake of this video, I'm gonna keep it simple and do 2550, okay? Now, you wanna click on the void, hold shift, select the right part of the curve, left click, flatten it out, hit apply. And now this time we wanna go in the memory and give it 1200. Now I will spend a few seconds talking about the memory as well. Unlock the power limit, unlock the temp limit, hit apply, same procedure, save the profile, hit apply, and here we have it. Now, again, if you want to just copy it and spend zero time thinking, 
this is it. So the video is over. You can close the video, but please drop a like, subscribe to the channel if it was helpful, and I hope to see you in the next one. But if you want to stay and actually understand how to make this better for your card, here we are. It's going to be a bit boring, though. So basically, this one on the x-axis is the voltage. Now, the lower this one is, the lower your temperature, power consumption, etc. is going to be. However, the lower this is, the lower you can actually get a stable frequency. So what we want to do is find a spot in which we are comfortable with the temperatures, but then we want to push basically the megahertz as high as possible. So without speaking too much, how much can you push it? Well, you can easily push 1000 millivolt right here. So if you want to basically voltage point overclock, which is still an undervolt technically, your card, you want to get the 1000 millivolt voltage point and try to push it as high as possible. Why don't you want to get like 1050? Because then you're going to start hitting power limit. If you really want to push it, you can do 1025, but really don't go higher than it. Trust me, okay? Especially if you don't have a power limit slider, do not go higher than one volt, okay? Now, with 1000 millivolt, how much can you get? Well, on most cars, you can actually get 2900 working right here, or just a little bit under, like 2895, for example. It doesn't have to be the exact number here, by the way. Let's see if this works for my card, okay? So we bring it up and we flatten the other side. Let's see. As you can see, for my card, it's working, but it might not work for every card. For the memory clock, if you want to customize it and push it differently, basically, the higher the memory clock, the more the FPS. Straight up, it's pretty simple. The higher the number, the higher the FPS. However, this can get unstable pretty quick. So you have to test it and not in heaven benchmark. You have to test it in games. Every single card, even the worst card out there on the 16 gigabytes of RAM this card has can get plus 600, okay? Now the best card can get plus 1500, okay? Only the top of the line, the 1% of the cards can actually get like 17, okay? 17 is pretty high at least in my testings. I ha I've had a few of these, obviously. But if you want to just start with a stable number, I recommend for most of you 1200 if you're really pushing the performance. 1200, honestly, will work for most of you. So exactly like this, with 1000 millivolt, 2900 megahertz, plus 1200 memory, this is a very proper, aggressive performance profile, but you have to test it out for yourself. And now the video is actually finished, okay? so. If it was helpful, please, first thing, drop a comment and tell me it worked because it helps other people validate this video as well. And remember your promise and drop a like and subscribe to the page. We actually do builds like the build we have here today with the GPU. I have it on the channel. We do reviews of weird things, giving different opinions, at least in my opinion, and much more. Again, many more tutorials like this one. So I hope to see you guys in another video as well. And I wish you a very good day. Goodbye.